Put your hand up if you were here last week. If you were here last week, put your hand up. You were here last week. He was here last week. I remember him. Or the week before last. Okay, that's right. Week before last. All right. All right. Just a few of you. Who remembers who was here last week? Not the week before last, but last week. Who remembers what we what our lesson was on? Josiah? Who do you remember? Levi, do you remember? What was it? Bible says it was 5,000 men plus women and children. They, yeah, yeah, they didn't count the women and children. They, they said women and children, no, they're not important. We're just going to count the men. Well, the men need to be men. The men do what the women say. See, my dad always used to say, I'm the head of the house, and your mama is the neck that turns the head. The neck controls what the head does. My mama controlled what my dad did. Seriously? Seriously? All right, so Jesus had just got done doing a huge miracle. He took five loaves of bread and two little fish. And no, he didn't slap them with the fish. Anybody ever watch Veggie Tales? Anybody ever watch Veggie Tales? Yeah. You remember the story in Nineveh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What did oh, the people of yeah. Nineveh do? Oh, yeah. They would slap each other in the yeah. face with the fish, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, now, by the way, now, and you might see this, I don't know if you'll see it at camp or not, but if, if when, the, when the teens get together, they, they do the latest fad, and that's tortilla slapping. They take a tortilla, and they slap each other, trying to... Oh, yeah, the oh, person oh, getting slapped has a mouthful of water. I saw that video. Yeah, you saw the video. So, so, so they have water in their mouth? <laughs> and then if they don't spit it out, right, you probably, that means you they might, move. Are you in the junior or senior? You're in the junior, so you probably won't see it. They probably won't let the kids do it. Hadassah might, Hadassah's participated here, so is Lizzie. So, anyway. Back to the story, though. They did not slap each other with fish. No. He took two little fish and five loaves of bread and fed well over 5,000 people with it. That was a miracle. Who knows what a miracle is? Nathaniel, do you know what a miracle is? Something good happens. Something good happens? Yes. That's yes. What do you say? Huh? Miracle powers. Miracle powers. What are miracle powers? What? What is a miracle? You gotta think about it. Didn't? You gotta say it louder. But something good, okay, and that's what Daniel said. Favor? When something impossible. When something impossible happens. Look, hey, Levi, you need to put that back on you. Okay? Otherwise, I'm gonna put it on your back. Would me come put it on your back? Levi, you want me to come put it on your back? Okay, let me put it on your back. I'll be right back after this commercial break. Well, you done did it, buddy. You done did it. I'm going to just take this. I know who you are. We'll just take this and put it over here. Mug for the camera. Ha <laughs> ha! You know, that'll get on it. <laughs> of course it will. I just went up to the, I just went up to the front of the camera on YouTube. And go, so that's going to that's gonna get on YouTube. All right, listen. So after Jesus did that, now he took those five loaves and two fish 
and he fed over 5,000 people. That's impossible. That can't happen. But it did. That's why it's called a miracle. A miracle is when something that can't happen does. When God does a wonderful work, there is no impossible with God. Nothing is impossible for God. So, that was a that was quite a quite a trick, huh? And so the people thought, wow, this guy can he can make bread where there is no bread. He can he can take five loaves of bread and feed over five thousand people. We're gonna take this guy and we're gonna make him the king. He's gonna be our king. And Jesus didn't want to have any of that. He didn't want it to be their king. He wanted to be king of their hearts, not king of the land. But here's what he did. He said, Joseph, why don't you sit up, please? He said, Aria, why don't you sit up, please? No, Jesus didn't say that. <laughs> he said to his disciples, I want you guys to get into your boat, because they, the, they were near the seashore. He said, get into your boat, and I want you to row over to the other side of the sea. I want you to row over to the other side of the sea, and I'll meet you over there. And then he sent the crowds away. After he sent the crowds away, he went up onto a mountain to pray. He went up onto a mountain to pray. Nathaniel, what does it mean to pray? What does that mean? He's speaking to the Lord. He's speaking to God. And you know, he had a special relationship with God. You know who God was? Yeah. Who? God was his father. So just like you speak to your dad, when Jesus was praying, he was speaking to his dad. He was speaking to his father. And he's, he went up onto the hillside to pray. Now, he could see out over the lake, the sea. They call it a sea. Some people call it a sea. Some people, in some places in the Bible, they call it a lake. It's a big old body of water. But Jesus could see across the sea, across the lake. And he watched as a storm came up. And the disciples were out in the boat. And they were trying to row the boat. And they were trying to row the boat. And the wind was blowing against them. Anybody ever been out on a boat? Everybody, anybody ever row a boat? You ever row a boat? Oh, I have. Aria. Have you ever tried to row a boat when the wind is blowing in your face? It's hard, isn't it? Yeah. And the waves get real big, and you go up and down, up and down the waves, right? Here's what can happen, though. I was out on a lake one time when I was, uh, I was about 15 years old. We were at camp. We were at camp. And there was a big, big lake near where our camp was. And we were out on the lake. And the waves started to get kind of big. So we thought it would probably be a good idea for us to turn around and go back. We were in a kayak. Or not a kayak, I'm sorry. We were in a canoe, rather. We were in a canoe. We thought it would be a good idea to go back. Because it was getting the waves were getting a little too high. And so we started to turn. And just as we turned, a wave came and hit us broadside. Hit us right along the side, a big old wave. There goes the canoe. And me and my buddy into the water. We went into the water. That's what can happen when a big wave comes. And so the disciples, and there were 12 of them, so it was a pretty big boat, and they're trying, they're trying hard to row, and they're trying hard to row, and they're not making very good progress. They get a little frustrated. Now it's the middle of the night. And Jesus is done praying. And he goes walking out to them on the sea. Wait a minute. He's walking on the water. He's walking on the water. Anybody ever walk on the water? Huh? I saw a video. Yeah, on top of the water. You ever, oh, you ever walk on top of the water? No. I saw a video. Oh, no. no well, you, ever, you, ever, you ever step into a swimming pool? You know, you get, you get the swim pool in front of you and you just step out into the swim pool. And you fall in, right? You just sink to the bottom. That's what I saw the But I can't. Yes, I saw some people put some towels on the water. Now, 
I will tell you for a fact that I have walked on water. <laughs> it was ice, but that doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> it was ice. Ice frozen water. Ice, ice. Baby. Ice, ice baby, yeah. Jesus was not walking on the ice. Jesus was walking on the water. Now that's impossible, right? Yeah. Right? Right? Miracle. Yeah. Miracle. Another miracle of God. Here comes Jesus. He's walking on the water. He's walking on the water. And pretty soon he comes up to the boat where the disciples were and they're struggling to row and they're struggling to row. And Jesus just... Now, another place in the Bible says he would have just passed right by him. And all of a sudden, they saw him. And they said, Ah! It's a ghost! Save us! Jesus. Now, the Bible, here's how the Bible reads. Here's how the Bible reads. They said, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Or do not be afraid. Fancy words. Fancy words. Do you know anybody who talks like that? I know. Do not be afraid. It is I. Be of good cheer. Huh? Prince. Prince. He's gone. He's dead. He's dead. He dead. He's not alive anymore. Be of good cheer, it is I. Oh. oh. No. More like, guys, guys, chill out. Guys, relax. Hey, it's just me, okay? Guys. So, Peter. Peter's one of the disciples, right? Yeah. Let me tell you something about Peter. Do you know somebody who's always the first to talk? Yes. It doesn't matter what situation, they've always got a comment about something. When it comes to doing something, they're going to be the first ones to rush in and do it, and half the time they get in trouble. Right? You know somebody like that? You know somebody like that? Peter was that guy. That's who Peter was. Peter was always the first one to open up his mouth. So he looks at Jesus, he says, if it's really you, have me come out on the water and walk to you. In other words, prove it. If it's really you, prove it. Have me, tell me to come walk out on the water. So Jesus said, come on. Well, Peter, put your money where your mouth is. Huh? Back up what you're saying, Peter. You got some big words there, Peter. If it's really you, tell me to come walk on the water. Okay? I'll call you bluff. Come on, Peter. Come on. You got some big words. Come on, prove it. So what happens now? If Peter doesn't get out of the boat. Don't just think Jesus could go. You check it, Peter. You check it. Now Jesus was too kind to do that. I would do that. I would do that. If Peter was all spouting off and, hey, if it's you, come tell me to walk, uh, to walk to you on the water. Come on, Peter. Come on. Yeah, that's right. And if he doesn't do it, then I go, bah, 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 check in, check in. You got big words, but you can't put the action to your words. But you know what? Let's pretend this is the side of the boat. And here comes Peter. Okay, so I'm still hanging on to the boat because I ain't 
My, my foot's not going. My foot's on the water and it ain't going nowhere. That's kind of freaky. All right, so I.
answer is yes. 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 With God. Nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. So what does that mean? That means whatever you need. Now, if I were to say, you know what? God lives in me. So I could go over to my swimming pool and I could step off the side into the water and I'm going to just walk on the water because God lives in me. You know what's going to happen? I'll just sink right to the bottom. Actually, I'll float because I'm kind of bad. But I'll sink. You know why? God's power is not for us to show off with. God's power is not for us to show off with. Listen, there are people, even here in the United States, they, they saw in the scriptures that the Bible said you could take up serpents. You know what a serpent is? Uh, somebody said it over here. A snake. The Bible said you could take up serpents. You could take up snakes and they won't harm you. And so there are people that they get in their church services and when they feel the Spirit of God really moving, they got rattlesnakes in boxes stored under the front pews and they start pulling out the rattlesnakes and start waving them around because the power of God is in me and the rattlesnake can't hurt me. Many people get bit and die. Now listen, they are... They're showing faith in God. But here's the problem. They're showing off. They're showing off. God is not for making sport. God does not want you to be showing off. Oh, look. I'm serving God. I can walk on the water. I can take up snakes. I can drink poison and it won't hurt me. That's silly. That's Foolish. But let me tell you this. If the need comes up, you can walk on water. Because the God that you read about in the scriptures, the stories in the Bible that you read about that happened 2,000 years ago, God didn't change. God still does that stuff today. Seriously. Sorry, I didn't spit on you. God still does that stuff today. Anything you need. Anything you need. Anything you need. God will provide. Even if that means you walk on water. How cool would that be, huh? How cool would that be? That would be awesome. That would, that would be really awesome. Now, God doesn't want me to show off. I wish I could walk in water. But let me... Let me, let me, uh, let me leave you guys with this, because I'm about to quit soon. God says, whatever you need, He will supply. What is that? What, whatever you need. If you need anything, if you need anything, God's got it. God has everything. And whatever you need, even if God has to do a miracle for you, He will. God will do a miracle for Josiah Lopez. God will do a miracle for Noel Robertson. God will do a miracle for Chris Mopecha. God will do a miracle for Jaden Mopecha. God will do a miracle for Faber Owasi. God will do a miracle for Aliyah Mopecha. God will do a miracle for Shalom Mopecha. God will do a miracle for Jason Mopecha. God will do a miracle for Aria Jerez. God will do a miracle.
for Harmony Patero. God will do a miracle for Serenity. Right, Serenity? Serenity for Patero. God will do a miracle for Matias Guerrero. God will do a miracle for Nathaniel Lopez. Why? Why is that? Why, why, why will God do miracles for you? Because he loves you. Because God loves you. You. If we need it, not if we want it. If you need it. Whatever you need, God will provide. If you need to walk on the water, you will walk on the water. Because our God never changes. I want everybody to bow their heads and close your eyes. Father, I thank you. Because you are a miracle working God. But your miracles didn't just happen in the Bible. They are not just stories that are 2,000 years old. God, I, I, I've seen you work miracles today. I know, God, that you are still a miracle working God. And I ask you that, that you would show each of the children that are here today that you love them so much that if they need a miracle, that you will provide. Give them the confidence that they can lean on you. Give them the confidence that they can depend on you. And I pray, Lord, that your blessing would be with them and that they would always, that they would always be aware of your love for them. And now I pray that you would go with them as we go to our houses today. I pray that you would be with every one of us. Keep us safe throughout the week and bring us back again rejoicing. Father, for those that are going to camp, I ask you that you would help them to have an awesome time and that they would draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.